Three, two, one, action. Welcome to another Kelly OG video. You know I like to make things beautiful, simple, short, sweet, and understandable. Um, so today we are going to be talking about how to find the perfect options contract or the perfect strike price for you because this is something a lot of people are very concerned about. Um, and I get this question pretty much all the time. People always say, well, Kelly, I understand how to get in the play, I just don't know which strike to choose. And the whole point of trading or being in a trading group is so that you can eventually leave the group because you know how to do it yourself. Unless you just want to copy paste, that's on you. But my point being, you want to be able to know that if Kelly decides she wants to go on vacation and just relax, or if whoever you're working with, or if you're just bored one day or you couldn't afford a membership and you want to trade yourself, you know exactly how to pick the perfect strike and how I personally pick my perfect strikes. I'm gonna try and make it really short, simple, and sweet, but we all know I talk a lot, so hopefully I don't do that. Anywho, I'm going to get right into it. So if you don't know what a strike price is, a strike price is essentially, and I'm gonna go to, um, let me go to a random stock. I'm currently on Hood, right? Hood, that's Robin Hood stock. So what I'm just gonna do right now is go to their options contracts. I'm gonna select a random date. This is super important, but for those, first off, who don't know what a strike price is, it are it is these several numbers that are here, 35, 36, 37, 34, all those, that's what you call a strike price because you want price to strike there or get near it, hopefully. Um, so the first thing you look for when looking for a strike price is the date. So you have to ask yourself, how long do I wanna hold this? and how like what is your reasoning for actually getting into it so if your reasoning is hey technical show on the 15 minute time frame which is more short term or the five minute time frame that i see this thing shooting up then by all means get into it um if you want that same week now some people even though they may see it shooting up that same week they don't want to potentially risk all their money and have a harder time gaining it back so what they'll do is they'll get like a one week, two week, three week expiration, even though they only plan to be in that trade for maybe 10 minutes, maybe two days, you know, it doesn't matter. But that is the first thing you need to ask yourself is how long do I plan to hold this and how risky do I want to get with it? Me personally, I've lost tens of thousands of dollars playing weekly, it's just straight weekly expirations, but I've also made tens of thousands of dollars also playing weekly expirations. So. It just depends on you as I've gotten better with technical analysis. A weekly doesn't scare me. A week, I love weeklies because they'll make you more money and they're fairly cheaper, but they're also way riskier because the stock may never go there. And you don't want to put $100, $200, $2,000 on a stock just for it to shoot up and you had it going down or just for it to shoot down, you had it going up and now you're like, oh my gosh, I have two days to make back $2,000 or else you're just paying your market tuition. And we don't like to pay tuition if we don't have to. The second thing that you're gonna look for after looking for the date and figuring out what date you want is if you're either buying a call or buying a put. I'm not gonna go into selling because selling up front, you need at least 100 shares. And right now I'm just talking about naked options in terms of calls and puts. So you're gonna look for it and you buying a call or a put and that's very important because remember, you pick up the phone to call, so calls go up and you put down the phone when you're done, so puts go down. So if you think a stock is going up, don't accidentally buy a put. If you think it's going down, don't accidentally buy a call. We don't do that here. We don't wanna do that here. We lose out on money. So essentially next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna look, remember that in the money makes you more money because the stock price is already passed there. And out the money makes you less money because price has not gotten there so it's not gonna be as quote unquote certain. Your strike price isn't as certain because what if price never reaches there? And you have your money all tied up on a, I don't know, like $15 put and price never drops all the way down to $15. You know, even though it's currently at 13, but you get my point. Okay, so now if you're looking at a put, remember for puts, in the money is above the current share price, so it's greater than the current share price, out the money is below. For calls, in the money is below the current share price and out the money is above because price has not reached there. And then you're not gonna go, I'm gonna go to calls. Third thing, you're gonna select your strike price, but in order to pick the perfect one, you want to now look at the Greek. So let's say I want this $14 call price is currently at $13.25. This is out the money because it's above the current share price. You're gonna press it and you're gonna see the Greeks and your Greeks are gonna have, if you look at the bottom left of your screen, 
you're gonna see your Delta is $36 and your Theta is five bucks. And the reason I get the dollars is because you have 100 shares in every contract. So if you see 36 cents, that means $36. If you see negative five cents and ignore the negative, pretend it's not there, it doesn't really mean much. When you're actually calculating, you're gonna do five cents times 100, that's $5. So with that being said, in your head, you know, okay, if I buy this $14 call, if Robinhood moves up just $1, I'm gonna make, excuse me, if Robinhood moves up just $1, I'm gonna make $36 minus $5. So $1 in any given day, you're making $31 on just one contract. Now, if you buy 10 contracts, remember you do that 31 times 10 now, because one contract, you make $31. So if you have 10, you now make $310, you know, and then, you're now gonna look at, okay, um, do I wanna use that, right? Do I wanna use these Greeks? And another thing to note is that the theta and the delta do move, I'm gonna go back to that, I'm sorry. And so that 36 can turn into 40, or it can go all the way down to 13, depending on how the stock moves. So it's just important, but when picking the strike price, you wanna get your best Greeks possible, because I don't wanna say guarantees, but you have a better chance at making more money that way. So. If Robinhood moves $3 on any given day, you'll now do 36. I'll round it up to 40 because I don't feel like doing the math. So 40 times three, you're looking at $120 minus five bucks. And you walk away with $115 per contract. If you have 10 contracts, that's $1,150 or so. Hopefully I'm correct on that. And the very last thing you want to look at, um, and this is where it really matters, is actually looking at how much it costs. So if you say, I only want to spend $50 on a contract, well, this 13.5 costs $56, so you don't want that. But the $14 call is $37, so that's in your price range. However, if you say, I want to buy two contracts so that if one profits, I can sell it and leave the other one, right? You would now look at the 14.5, and that's $23. So if you buy two, you're only spending about, what is that, $46? So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna press that 14.5, look at the Greeks, you'll see you make $25 per dollar the stock moves up, and you lose $4 every day that you hold it. So if it moves $2 in one day, you're looking at $50 for a per contract, so you're looking at $100. So you turn $50, well, $46 into $100, which is so beautiful. Now, subtract the four, you make 96 bucks, and you actually get to sell it for plus $50. So you spent $50 to buy it, you make $96 off of it, so you get to now sell for what is that, $146 or so? So, that is essentially how you buy a contract. Now, for those of you who wanna know how to actually purchase it, let's say we go with this 14.5, you would now go and put in how many contracts you want. We wanted two, so we're just gonna go ahead and press review, and then we would swipe up. Um, as you can see, the bid ask, so there are 21, or there are, 68 people, you can see that under bid, want to buy this contract at $21, and there is only one person that is willing to sell it for $24. So you'll probably have a good chance of getting filled, but if you say, hey, I want to get filled immediately, I don't feel like competing, you can edit this to fill that ask, or if you're like, mm, I don't want to pay 23 if I don't have to, so let me see if 22 works, you can, oh, my bad, <laughs> I should put that right here. You can also put that in with your two contracts, boom, swipe up, call it a day, and that is how you would find perfect strike price. Um, for me sometimes though, if I'm playing something like earnings, you'll see me shoot up, not literally, or if you're playing a high market cap stock, cause that's important, right? So some people have the question, and this is a very important part. So if I still have you here, just stick with me for one more minute. If you are trading a very expensive stock like Tesla, and you go to trade options, and you wanna get, let's say next week or two weeks out, okay? you're gonna notice that these are abortly expensive. They're super expensive. And the higher you go, let's see, you found some for, let's see, these are super cheap. Let's say you found one for $110. That's a $1,075 call. And you may say to yourself, Tesla's not gonna hit $1,075, and you're probably right. However, it's really important to note that Tesla on any given day can move 50 to $100. So this is where you're gonna see your delta, which is $2, okay, you have a $2 delta, and then, your theta is $26, meaning if the stock moves $1 on any given day, you lose 24 bucks because your theta is higher than your delta. So some people might say, Kelly, the Greeks look really bad, why would I buy it? Well, what's important to note is if Tesla can move $50 in one day, you just do two times 50, you make 100 bucks, 
and boom, subtract that 26, you walk away with $84. Or is that 74? That's $74. Anywho, um, but one important thing, thing to note when you're trading high market cap stocks like this is the gamma. Now the gamma is gonna tell you what's moving. So one really important thing to note when trading high market cap stocks is the gamma. The gamma is going to tell you how likely the delta is to move. So the higher your gamma is, the more likely your delta will be able to move up or down. Now this is 0007, which means even if Tesla moved $50, this may not move as much as you think it would. So to show you an example of what that is, if we go closer to where the current strike price is, so 885, you'll see that your gamma is fairly higher. It's over four times, five times, six times higher because remember we had 0 0.007, now we have 0 0.0041. So you have a higher chance of it moving and note you have a $41 delta and a $144 theta. That's okay. Know that that's okay because Tesla can move a lot. So it's really important to know how much and how often and how cool and how a stock moves, especially when buying your strike price. So just remember, you pick your date, you then pick your call or put, then you're gonna pick the strike price, look at the Greeks, well, look at the Greeks, then look at the strike price, and then purchase the premium that you like. And those are the five key steps to finding the perfect strike price, depending on you. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and send me some tea, because my nose, for some reason, is very stuffed, because the weather outside is very cold. But anywho, again, thank you for watching. Make sure to check out my other videos, and let me know in the comments if there's anything else you would like for me to film. Now I'm gonna go. So um, stay around though, stay around on the channel and don't miss me too much.